Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from Genesis chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth, God said. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth, God said to Noah. This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions, Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. 
He guides the humbles in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. To you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If it seems like we just read this passage from Mark's gospel recently, well, we did, at least the first part of it. We read the story of Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan River last month on the first Sunday after the Epiphany. And that reading closed with the voice of heaven, the voice of God, proclaiming to Jesus, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And if those words sound really familiar, well, it's because we heard a variation of that proclamation from God in last week's story about the transfiguration. The voice of God comes down from the cloud, and instead of speaking to Jesus, God speaks these words to Peter, James, and John about Jesus. And God says, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The readings for the Sundays after Epiphany began with the voice of God telling us who Jesus really is. And they ended last Sunday with the voice of God telling us who Jesus really is, with a command from God to do something, to listen to Jesus. And now, today we continue in Mark where we left off on that Sunday last month, the first Sunday after the Epiphany the baptism of our Lord. We hear once again about Jesus' baptism, and we hear once again the voice of God, and then we read that the Spirit of God drove Jesus out into the Judean wilderness, most likely the same barren wilderness where John the Baptist lived and preached. Mark gives us far less detail about Jesus' 40-day retreat in the Judean wilderness than does Matthew or Luke. Mark tells us only that Jesus was tempted by Satan, was with the wild beasts, and that the angels waited on him. No dialogue with Satan here, and we have no clue as to the temptations that faced Jesus. We don't know whether or not he was fasting for those 40 days, and Mark covers those 40 days in only two very brief sentences. Two very brief sentences that are loaded. Two very brief sentences that engage our imagination. What were those 40 days like for Jesus? What did it mean to be tempted by Satan? What's up with the wild beasts? How many angels waited on Jesus and what did they do? No, Mark doesn't give us a lot to go on. One minute the voice of God is proclaiming Jesus as his beloved son, and the next sentence the Holy Spirit is driving Jesus out into the wilderness, not inviting, not suggesting, not recommending, but driving Jesus away from the lush Jordan River Valley and civilization up and out into the barren and rocky Judean wilderness. Jesus had no choice in the matter. So from a kind of mountaintop experience on the banks of the Jordan, into the isolation of the wilderness went the Son of God. Forty days, more than a month, we are told that Jesus was in the wilderness and that he was tempted by Satan. So he wasn't alone. We know that. Was he tempted to sin by Satan out there in the wilderness? Probably not. It's kind of hard, I think, to sin out there. But was he tested spiritually? Oh yeah, I think he was. We don't know how, but that's probably what was going on. Satan and the wild beasts, which also represent the dark side of life, the hostile powers, were very much present with him during those 40 days. But God had not abandoned Jesus to the darkness. No, because it seems that the angels of God were there to give Jesus the strength to fight off the powers of darkness. Jesus was struggling with himself during those 40 days, I would imagine. Maybe he was trying to unpack the meaning of those words from heaven back at the Jordan River right after his baptism. What does it mean to be God's son? 
What was that baptism all about? What kind of life and mission is God calling him to? And for 40 days, he may have struggled with those questions. And by the time those 40 days were over, and after John the Baptist had been arrested, Jesus came out of the Judean wilderness and headed north into Galilee, where he began his public ministry. Like John before him, he preached repentance, calling on people to turn their hearts back to God, back to love, because the realm of God was near in time and that would be good news for the poor and the hungry and the oppressed and for all who reached out to them in love. In a way, Jesus had observed a holy Lent during those 40 days in the wilderness, although this holy season had not yet been invented. For Jesus, those 40 days became a time of self-examination, of, of testing. Would he have the strength to do the work that God was going to give him to do? And the answer we know now is yes. Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He had no choice. We, on the other hand, are invited Invited to observe a Holy Lent, an invitation that was extended throughout the world on Ash Wednesday just last week. This is an invitation that we can accept and even welcome. It is also an invitation that we can decline or ignore. The choice is ours. And I confess that it is probably easier to decline or ignore this invitation to look deep into ourselves and our relationship with God and our neighbor. That takes work, that takes time, that takes discipline, and it's sometimes very inconvenient. But there will probably come a time in the life of everyone here today when we will be driven into the wilderness by some event in our life, when we will be tested as we have never been tested before, when we will be forced to come face to face with the powers of darkness. And maybe you've already faced that test. And perhaps more than once in your life, divorce, the death of a loved one, a serious illness, loss of a job. These are often wilderness times for us, times of anger and deep sadness and frustration and times during which our faith can be sorely tested. And the last 12 months of this COVID pandemic have tested all of us, and many have indeed faced loss. But these are also times when God can be powerfully present and affirming in our lives, times when Maybe surprisingly, we find our relationship with God deepened and strengthened. We are invited throughout the year to deepen our relationship with God in Christ through the sacraments, through the hearing and responding to God's word, through our relationships with each other. And that's why we gather together week after week as the body of Christ in person or these days via Zoom or Facebook Live or YouTube. But for a few brief weeks during the year, we are invited in a very deliberate way to acknowledge our humanity, our weakness, our mortality, and, and our need for Christ's healing presence in our lives. We are invited individually and as a community of faith to go deeper, deeper into ourselves, deeper into our relationships with our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, so that we will come out at Eastertide ready to renew with joy and confidence our baptismal covenant and ready to face whatever comes our way with strength and with love. And when that day comes, when each of us is driven into the wilderness, we will know and feel and rejoice in the power of the love of God in Christ. So, once again, we invite you to the observance of a Holy Lent. May it be so.
Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the holy church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of nations, for our outgoing and our incoming wardens, vestry members and convention delegates, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, for all who suffer in any way from COVID, for all caregivers and all involved with their care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Brittany, Elaine, Bill and the whole White family, Dan, Tom, Danielle, Addie, Olita, Kristen, Nancy Maturo, Bob, Jerry, Elaine, Scott, Garth, Ben, Nancy, Tilda, Earl, Harry, John, Mike, Mary, Teddy, Russell, Stephen, Anne, Sam, Ben, and Maria, and for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. 
for Louise Appling, Bill Nolb, and all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. In the communion of Alban and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord, our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Good morning, friends. Welcome. So good to be with all of you here and with all of you there. Here we are gathered together. Just a few quick announcements for this morning. I want to continue to invite you to join us for Plenty Good Room, the Lenten um, study that we're doing where we're looking at American history, we're looking at scripture, and we're looking at these words of spirituals of our siblings of color. Um, and so would encourage you to join us on Wednesdays, starting this Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. There are some books still available here at the church office. If you're interested, contact Janet. Um, and she'll get you connected to a book. The second announcement is that we, starting March 7th, will be worshiping back together in person. And we invite you to come as you are able. Please know, though, that there will also be an opportunity to worship via live stream at, for the 1015 service. So there will be an 8 a.m. service, which will not also be live streamed, and a 1015 service, which will also be live streamed. So, um, whichever way you feel comfortable worshiping, we worship together always, which is exciting. And the last announcement I have is something that has been in the works. We finally have a name for it. It's called the 333 service. And it's called that because we are reminded of the Trinity, which gathers us. We are reminded of the physical address of the place that gathers us, which is 333. And the time in which we will gather, which will be 333 p.m. starting on February 28th. This service is an interactive abbreviated service for geared towards our, our younger members, but we invite folks from all ages to join us. There will be singing and praying and reading and discussion. Um, and we will do all of this gathered on Zoom. You might be wondering, oh, we're starting back in person on worship on March 7th. Does that include this service? Currently, that does not include the service. We will continue to gather on Zoom for the 333 service until further notice. We hope that you will join us. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. gracefully. <laughs> Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. There we go. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love certain with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, holy abiding spirit, bless you forevermore. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord.